guys. Welcome back to another episode of Atlas Survival Shelters. I'm going to give you a sneak peek to upcoming episodes. This is a generator pod that's going to bolt onto this big boy right here. And we'll be installing this in about two weeks. So that will be a great episode for you guys to see. We're doing a watertight round right now. So I've been filming this every single day. So you get to watch us build that. This is that big modular bunker we've been working on for a few months. It's almost done on the inside. They're putting in the showers and the kitchen counters with granite, but it's gonna be a beautiful interior. It's gonna feel like a nice hotel room. And last but not least, we'll be doing a video on this heavy duty underground gun vault bunker that's made with these big heavy duty I-beams. And what's cool about this one, it's got built into the wall shelves. So guys, if you're interested in any of these builds, make sure you like and subscribe to the Atlas Survival Shelter channel, and I'll see you in future videos. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Atlas Survival Shelters. I hope everyone is doing fine and they're healthy and this coronavirus hasn't touched anybody in your family. So today, guys, we're going to have one of the funnest videos I've done in a while. And the next video is going to even be funner than this one, if you can believe that. But as you saw in the intro there, guys, I got some fantastic bunkers I'm building. Uh, the big boy culvert's ready to go in. I'm building a round water type. That big giant modular that's going to have all the fancy interior with the crown molding is almost done. We're getting ready to install it. We're building that heavy duty bunker with the I-beams that's going to have a Fort Knox door on it. And it's got all the storage in the walls. So that's, I got to come up with a new name for that style of bunker because people like that one already. Um, it looks like it's earthquake proof, don't it? So maybe we'll call it the Beast Earthquake Shelter. So for now, let's just call it the Beast. I want the Beast Bunker. That's the one with the big heavy duty I-beams that looks like you could drive a tank on it. And guys, you could drive a tank on that. So you know what we're going to do today, guys? I don't have a tank, but I got I got a forklift and a 12,500 pound tornado shelter. So one of the things that's fun about being in business is sometimes having competition. Well, we have this competitor, as you guys, all most of you know, called Rising S Bunkers. Well, let's do a little comparison today because for the longest time, for years, they've been kind of blasting me, okay? So on their website, this is what it says. It's us versus them, okay? It says, they claim that a C-channel exterior is sufficient. We have an engineer design and the C-channel alone is not sufficient. There are many things wrong with the C-channel alone, such as wall beam deflection. The competition has obviously failed to have the product designed by an engineer. Well, guys, let's just put that to a test today, and let's just try to drop 12,500 pounds down on an Atlas Survival Shelter and a Ryzen S Bunker, and let's see what happens. Now, to be fair about this, I'm going to use the smallest C-channel that I use in my wall compared to the square tubing in the C-channels that they put in their wall. Now, as you can see on this paper right here, they clearly specify what they use. A 3x3x10 three by three by gauge square tubing with a 3 inch by like 3.4 pound C channel for supports. And even in this picture right here with Gary Lynch, that shelter he's uh, standing in, you can see that there's that 3 inch square tubing, those channels, and even on the roof there, you see that 3 inch square tubing. So guys, that's a Ryzen S bunker, and we're, today we're going to put it up against an Atlas Survival Shelter in a crush test. My competitor uses in their post. How heavy is that, you think? Maybe 30 pounds. You think it weighs that much even? Put it up against what we're doing here. All right, so... This is what they put on their stuff, and this is what we put on some of our heavy-duty shelters. But even below that is a 12-pound I-beam. And then over here, bring it over here next to the 5-inch channel that we put on all our bunkers. We don't use anything less than a 5-inch channel, okay? Um, I don't have good light here. Let me get over here. Or put it next to it. Just put it right there. Just so... This is what we got. We got five inches in depth and using a three inch square tube. And this is what you use for a fence post. All right. So now we're going to do what's called a crush test on it. We're going to drop that 12,500 pound 
tornado shelter, we're gonna drop it on channel, on the tubing, and we're gonna drop it on the I-beam that we use in my bunkers over there. What we got here is the material sizes that I use on my bunkers and what my competitor uses on his. He puts in his wall, this square tubing right there. I put in my walls a channel on my smaller bunkers, like those over there. And then on my heavier bunkers, I put on an I-beam, all right? So there's gonna be no editing cutting on this. So there can't be any cheating. So that's what it looks like on the end. We're gonna take that 12,500 pound tornado shelter and we're gonna drop it on each one. And you're gonna find out which one is stronger. It's kind of a no brainer, but I'm gonna show you for myself. First, we'll go ahead and do our competitors tubing that they put in their walls. They use a square tubing in the walls and a rectangle tubing on their ceilings. I don't ever use either one. I, that's like a fence post to me. Come on in. All right, a little more. Okay, that's good right there. We'll center it. All right. All righty. Okay, going back up. Okay, that is our competitors or what we call rising S bunkers. All right, now let's put in the other one. Drop in the uh, channel, which is the one we put on our walls. Okay, stop, all right. Now come on down on the channel. Come on down. This is what we put in our walls. All right, let's see what it's doing here. Okay, it's flexing it a little bit. Now take it back up. It's straight. All right, now let's do the eye beam. Ready? All right, well, come on down on the I-beam. Didn't even move the I-beam. Go back up higher, go up about five feet. And then come down as fast as you can on the I-beam. All right, all right, now come down. All right, tell him, come on down now. Now, yeah. <laughs> it, it doesn't even move it. There's zero flex in it. Matter of fact, the I beam, the I beam broke the concrete, 12,500 pounds. So guys, that's a real comparison. This is Atlas's heavy duty bunkers. This is Atlas's standard bunkers with its channel. And then this is our competitors putting square tubing in the wall, okay? So if I go over to one of my bunkers here, see, and all my walls, there's that structural channel and then in between it is a structural channel. We went ahead and made basically a wall section like our competitor uses. They put the square tubing two feet on center and then they put their channels going from tubing to tubing, just like in this picture here of one of their bunkers. So this is a wall section and we welded it all the way around. We used the same gauge channel, the same gauge steel, everything. So now he's gonna go ahead and drop the shelter. All right, come on down. Pick it back up. Back on out. Wait, stay right there. Actually, take that out and I'll put my I-beam back in there and do the exact same thing with my I-beam. All right, take that out, put my I-beam in there and do the exact same thing to the I-beam. 
Although we've already done it, do it again. Atlas literally is crushing the competition right here. Go ahead and grab that I beam. Give it the exact same intensity. There you go. No cutting of the film here either. There you go. All right, give it hell. Bring it on down. Go! Didn't even move it. Pull it back up. I beam is still straight as an arrow. Didn't even warp my I beam. So guys, back on out. That is a 12,500 pound concrete tornado shelter being dropped on an Atlas survival shelter versus our competitor. And you guys all know our competitors rise in S bunkers. So guys, Atlas literally is crushing the competition. I didn't forget, now I'm going to basically take the way I do my walls on my smaller shelters, which are called the safe cellars, and I'm going to use the smallest channel I use, which is a 5 inch channel, okay? And now we're going to drop it on there. But this shelter over here, it's the same way. See, it's 5 inch channels with these two fit going back across here. So that's what we put on our walls, and that's what I got right there. So now I'm going to test my shelter the exact same way versus the uh, competitors square tubing, which they think is stronger than channel. They're idiots. That's all I can say, they're idiots. But everyone knows that, but now I'm just proving it. 12,500 pounds, solid concrete. I've got my wall support in there, this way we make it. And this is the smallest size I use, as I said, five inch channel with a four inch channel going across. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Give it hell, go ahead. Pick it up, do it again. <clears throat> it didn't move it. Hit it again. <clears throat> go up again. Higher, higher. Higher, higher, that's good. Come down hard. Pick it up. Still straight there, go higher, higher. Okay, now come down. That's really high, it's twice as high. Damn, it ain't moving. Go up, go up again. We're gonna go as high as we can go without tilting the forklift over. All right, come on down. <laughs> it didn't do nothing. Five inch channel, the weakest channel we use on our bunkers. Pick it up. Straight as an arrow. Never bowed, never moved. That's an Atlas survival shelter for you. Well, well, there you have it, guys. Literally a side-by-side -side comparison. We even hit, we hit mine with three, four times. hit the Ryzen S uh, Delta engineering one time. Some idiot on their website said that tubing is stronger than channel. Now that is a five inch channel, but that's what we use on our bunker. 
and that's what they use in their shelter. So if you want a Ryzen S bunker, there you go. If you want an Atlas survival shelter, there you go. But you go to any one of my bunkers in here, you'll find a five inch channel like that. That's five inches with a four inch going across. Even my staircase has a five inch channel going across it. Where my competitor, like in this picture here, look at that, it's just a square tube and our small channel, five inch channel. So I put the same strength in the walls of my staircases as I do my bunkers. And then I even go bigger on bigger bunkers. Then on the roof up there, I go to eight inch channel. We're on these ones here, we have six inch channel. So guys, as I get bigger, I go stronger. But that test that we just did right then, you can't fake that stuff. I was actually surprised that my channels didn't bend a little bit. I was very surprised. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. That means we get to these bunkers I'm making here using I-beams in the walls. So guys, I-beams are probably twice as strong as the channels. And that's, that I-beam right there is probably several times stronger. Um, this is basically gonna be an earthquake proof, blast proof bunker right here. All right, that is the strongest I can go right now unless I go to a deeper I-beam, but guys, it's almost not necessary, but you know what? Better safe than sorry. So guys, when you're comparing shelter companies uh, and products, look at the strength of the material, look at the strength of the steel, look at the type of air system, look at the doors, look if they have 90 degree turns on them. Look at this, 12 inch I-beams up there. And what we just tested was a six inch I-beam. I'm using 12 inch I-beams up there and six inch I-beams in the walls. So guys, you know, I'm very proud of the bunkers and uh, I wouldn't change anything if I could. So guys, as you can see, and I was very shocked myself because I've never done this before. I didn't know what to expect. My C channel, which was a five inch C channel, which is the smallest I use in my bunkers. I actually go up to six inch on my larger bunkers and I actually go up to eight inch on some of them. But I took my smallest channel that I use and I put it up against their square tubing. And when I dropped that on there, theirs just went bloop. I mean, it just bent at like a 45 degree angle. So I went ahead and built a section of the wall, just like this picture here with Gary Lynch, okay? Two foot apart, two foot on centers. And I dropped the concrete on top of it and it just folded it up. But then I dropped it on mine, not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. And even the fourth time I dropped it from like four or five feet high just to see what it would do. And guys, I was blown away how strong that my shelters are. So I don't know who the guy is who wrote the, uh, or designs the website over there at Rising S Bunker, but you know what guy? Um, golly, you better get an engineer, okay? So, um, you know, and this is the thing. I've visited maybe five or six of their bunkers uh, that have failed and flooded because they didn't weld the seams or whatever it may be, and they were all made the same, okay? So if they try to come back and say, well, that was just one time we did it. Well, guys, how do you like to be the one customer that bought that bunker with that? But guys, if you look at the pictures on their website, all the walls are made with square tubing with that little channel going across, okay? I've never made a bunker that way because I know how thin that material is and how weak square tubing is because it can crush. Where C-channel is made to deflect and do that. And as you can tell, it stays straight as an arrow, okay? So guys, I hope you enjoy this kind of video because the next one is even better. I'm going to do like 20 different comparisons and that's going to blow your mind when you see that video. So guys, as always, Thank you for watching my channel. Make sure you like and subscribe. Share this video if you want other people to see it. Hit that little ding, ding, ding bell. Let's you know when the Atlas Survival Shelter comes in. But guys, as always, I love you. I'll see you on the next video.